good to be back in New York, you know. I've been traveling quite a bit. I was out last night, and I realized that people outside of New York do not understand New York sarcasm at all. So I was in line at the bathroom the other night, and someone was like, hey man, are you waiting? I said, no, I like to watch. <laughs> you can't do that in Indianapolis. I know, because I tried, and they're like, come on in, city slicker. I was like, oh shit. I... Young people here, hello. How are you? What's your name? Kristen, how'd you hear about the show? Instagram. Instagram. You watch me while you shit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you, Kristen, for being here. Appreciate you. Kristen, you go to therapy? I don't. You don't? Life is just good. <laughs> I went to therapy for the first time ever this week. Thank you, yes. Trying to stop touching kids. Uh, <laughs> I said I'm trying. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm never going to stop. <laughs> Give me them keys. <laughs> no, I went to therapy for the first time ever because I'm trying to process the fact that I had testicular cancer. Oh, you didn't know? You call yourself fans? I wasn't going to talk about it, but then my therapist told me to grow a pair, so here we are. <laughs> Man, listen, this is going to be very important for you guys, okay? Please check yourselves. It's very easy. Just go home, think of me, and touch yourself. <laughs> I suspect the men's room lines are going to be very long after this show. <laughs> and ladies, I'm going to apologize in advance, okay? There's going to be a lot of reproductive organ talk on your ears in the next 40 to 45 minutes uncomfortable private parts discourse. That's not what you came to hear, I know. But now you know how we feel when you talk about your rights. You know, it's just so much. <laughs> so much incessant chatter. It's like, we get it. I'm just trying to watch the game here, okay? <laughs> I wrote that joke before the surgery, okay? So you can blame that one on the bad ball. They've since removed my toxic masculinity. And I miss it so much. I still feel like a man, you know? Like I love sports and pussy. I just cry watching LeBron now. That's a new emotion. Sometimes I wonder what that ball is doing, you know? Probably up in testicle heaven. Shooting out some deformed sperm. Meeting with some deformed uterus making some deformed child that Republicans would want to bring to full term, you know. <laughs> but just so it could get shot in school, you know, that's the only reason. Zero refunds at this show, I hope you understand that. And they put a fake one in. Yeah, I got a step ball. It's 24 karat gold. I wanted the most Indian nut possible. <laughs> it's also a Bluetooth speaker. <laughs> Anyone want to connect? <laughs> I'm kidding. It's obviously not a Bluetooth speaker. It's made out of silicone. The same thing breast implants are made out of. That's right. I got a titty in my balls. <laughs> <laughs> that joke was for you, sir, specifically. That, that was the, I need you laughing like that the entire fucking show. They put a fake one in because psychologically men need to. Did you know that? Psychologically men need to. They've done studies on people with this cancer. The guy with one ball, always sad. <laughs> That's how fragile the male ego is. <laughs> men need two balls. Apparently dudes don't like it if their scrotum looks like a person trying to escape a blanket. You know what I mean? Just... <laughs> And the doctor did not tell me he was going to put a fake one in. I just woke up. I was like, what the fuck is this? And he whispered, I hooked you up. <laughs> it's like, thank you, but why'd you make it so big? 
It's like Kevin Hart and The Rock down there. It's a wild scene. Like a Jumanji 4. And I've been asked a lot of wild questions since I've started talking about this, you know. There's always dudes. Dudes ask gross questions. One dude yelled out, do you bust half a load? I said, I don't know, let me measure on your face. Do you bust half a load? <laughs> Women ask the same question, just politely, you know. Like, Can you still have kids? <laughs> Want to find out? <laughs> I don't know, I hope so. Otherwise, I have no real incentive to stop doing drugs. <laughs> I want to have kids, but for all the wrong reasons, you know. Like, I need to force all my failed ambitions upon somebody. <laughs> Like, I need to make a hedge fund managing doctor that is also a starting point guard for the Lakers. Like, <laughs> I have this nephew who's, who's three years old and he loves cars. And he got into my car the other day and he's you know, playing with the steering wheel and all this, jerking her around, like, vroom, vroom, vroom. I'm like, oh shit, another F1 driver, man. A little Lewis Hamilton right here. But then he starts blaring on the radio and cursing at me in some other language, like, oh, Uber bound, for sure. This, is, this dude's driving Uber. <laughs> I want kids, because I got nephews who are so funny, and I've realized that being around kids is like being on drugs without having to be on drugs. I got a nephew, I was hanging out with him last Thursday, and he asked me, is tomorrow Friday? Or no? I was like, yeah, it's Friday, Miles, what's up? 10 seconds later, is tomorrow Saturday? <laughs> well, no. What, you got plans, bro? What the fuck you did? <laughs> Am I on shrooms right now? <laughs> the doctor reassured me I can still have kids. This is the miracle of the human body, such that if one testicle is removed, the remaining testicle will pick up the slack and do the work of two balls. <laughs> yeah, it's like a single mom, you know? I don't need no man to raise no kid. <laughs> I am cancer free, by the way. Thank you for asking. <laughs> You're clapping, but no one actually cares about testicular cancer. You see, women with breast cancer, you get a march, you get pink ribbons, NFL athletes wear pink cleats on certain game days. You'll never see a WNBA player with a blue ball sack on her shoulder. <laughs> Stay strong, brother. That's why I'm starting a testicle festival. All round shaped foods. We'll have a sack race. <laughs> That's all I got so far, I don't know where. I'm being quite glib about the whole thing, but don't get me wrong, I'm very grateful, you know. A, that I survived, and B, that I've been able to process it using laughs. My sister said, cancer could not have happened to a better guy. <laughs> I'm gonna take that as a compliment, okay? <laughs> this is the story, since you asked. It's so last February, my birthday night, my sister, my wife, and I were out at a vegetarian restaurant. My sister's vegetarian, and I support women. <laughs> Sure, let's go eat this goofy, unfulfilling food and I'll just door dash Wendy's when you go to bed. <laughs> we get drunk as shit to about two o'clock in the morning. I call Uber Black back to my apartment. Normally I would X, but you know, it's my birthday. <laughs> get into this Uber and I start reflecting on life. When you're 37, you start thinking about your life, you know? And I know the last few years have been difficult for a lot of people, but not for your boy. <laughs> I've had a great fucking run. My career's taken off, I got married, I'm about to have a Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich. Life is fucking good. Yes, thank you. And I look at my wife and I say to her, you know, nothing bad ever happens to me. As I finish the sentence, I feel a slight twinge in my tater tots. As if the universe was like, oh, what? Bing! But I ignored it, because I'm a man. And that's what we do. There's 150 dudes in this room right now. So 300 balls, give or take one. <laughs> Someone's balls hurt right now. And they've hurt for weeks. 
And this dude just ignored him. Yeah, I probably just banged into something. You know how balls be. <laughs> Get back to my apartment 20 minutes later. Sister passes out. I look at my wife and I say to her, baby, my balls hurt. She says, no. <laughs> I said, listen to my tone. I didn't say, baby, my balls hurt. I said, baby, my balls hurt. It's a subtle but important difference. I go to the bathroom, I jerk off. That doesn't solve the problem. Then I Google, why do my, Google finishes a sentence, balls hurt. <laughs> I gotta clear these cookies. <laughs> Google tells me I have torsion, which is when your body is tired of you masturbating so much, it twists your balls in a knot and hangs them as punishment. <laughs> That's medical fact, that's what happens. This requires surgical intervention. I call Uber Black to the hospital. It's my birthday. <laughs> I get to the hospital, NYU Langone in Cobble Hill, Brooklyn. It's relevant because five years ago, I had an asthma attack. I went to the same hospital. I got a bill for $6,000 and I didn't pay it. <laughs> Normally, I would never return to the scene of a crime, but this time I had my insurance card on me and I was waving this shit around like it's a black Amex. <laughs> Excuse me. Move these pores out of the way, please. <laughs> blue cross, blue shield coming through, hmm? I need a Gucci gown, executive suite, stat. Let's go, make this happen. <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning, the hospital is a mentally ill guy that the state has clearly failed. A gunshot victim and the cop that shot him. <laughs> and an entitled Indian man complaining he might have crossed his legs a little too hard. <laughs> I go to the front desk. They check in, they see it's my birthday. It's like, happy birthday. I'm like, is it? <laughs> Mr. Patel, huh, we have a lot of doctors here by that name. <laughs> I'm sure you do, is my mom back there? Who the fuck told you to say that? I don't need this shit right now. <laughs> what brings you to the hospital, Mr. Patel? Before I can say anything, the mentally ill guy yells out, he probably got something stuck in his ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've seen that walk before, brother. Don't worry, you'll be fine. But close. I just got some pain down there. Can I see a doctor? Like, all right. They give me a gown. I keep my Yeezys on because of pride, you know? <laughs> and yes, I still wear Yeezys. Only as a reminder to take my medication, okay? <laughs> sure. I go into the waiting room. In comes the ER doctor, fellow Indian man, Dr. Patel. It's like, what seems to be the problem? Now I'm trying to sound all smart, you know? Because I thought I could have been a doctor. I'm like, there's an intermittent pain in my right testicle. <laughs> it's persisted for 20 minutes. Uh, my diagnosis, it's epididymitis or testicular torsion. The doctor's like, your balls hurt, bro? I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> have you experienced any trauma in the last few days? I said, yeah, yes, my wife and I were actually into some pretty kinky shit. The other night we did the Floyd Mayweather. You guys know about this one? You know about the Floyd Mayweather? That's when my wife hits me in the ball so hard I forget how to read. <laughs> I've never come harder in my life. <laughs> I'm kidding, I have come harder once. September 8th, 2022. My wife and I were having sex with the TV on and news broke that Queen Elizabeth died. I was like, oh! Oh, cheerio, my crown jewels. <laughs> the doctor's like, are you done kidding around? I said, yes, no trauma, sir. You need an ultrasound. I said, all right, cool. He leaves. In comes the ultrasound tech. This is a beautiful 35-year-old woman who looks like Emma Stone. My wife is with me. And I realize that this woman is going to be the first woman to see my dick and balls in eight years that's not my wife. I got to admit, I'm excited. <laughs> Please have whiskey dick. <laughs> Do not get a boner right now, bro. <laughs> whiskey dick, if you're unaware, is when a man drinks so much whiskey, his dick doesn't work. The female equivalent 
is Wine Vagine. <laughs> you guys know about Wine Vagine? You know about it? Wine Vagine is when a woman drinks a lot of Pinot and then complains so much you no longer want to fuck her. <laughs> I sense some of you get a little wine vagina right now. <laughs> I go into the ultrasound room, and this woman is doing her job exceptionally well. And I'm trying to make small talk, you know, because it's cold. It's like, I'm a grower, not a shower. She leans in and goes, Don't worry, I have three young boys at home. What the fuck you mean by that, lady? <laughs> That's fucking rude. And it's a very uncomfortable situation, okay? It's three o'clock in the morning, this strange lady's hands are all up on my package. My wife refuses to break eye contact. <laughs> and I'm contemplating my role in the universe, you know? Like, why am I here? What is the point of all of this? And I'm also fighting the urge to make a joke. And I realize that's why I'm here. It's to be a clown. Whenever something's tense or uncomfortable, I don't know what to do but say something stupid, and I can't fight the urge any longer. I look at my wife and I say to her, you know, it's not the threesome I wanted for my birthday, but... <laughs> God works in mysterious ways. <laughs> she did not laugh. <laughs> the ultrasound lady started squeezing a little too hard. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was just kidding. Unless you're going to do it. <laughs> Go back into the waiting room. In comes the doctor. I said, Mr. Patel, you don't have torsion. I'm like, yes. But we found a small mass on your right testicle. I'm like, you talking about my dick or? <laughs> that old thing? <laughs> he did not laugh. My wife started crying immediately. But I didn't flinch. I looked like George Bush when he learned the towers got hit. You know, it was just... I'm leaving the hospital. They're like, hey, don't you owe us $6,000? I was like, yeah, put it in my tab, bitch. <laughs> Get home, try to shake my sister awake, tell her the news. She doesn't budge. I look at my wife, I'm like, see, we could have fucked. <laughs> Next day, I call my youngest doctor cousin. I got six of them. I call the youngest one. I'm like, hey man, they found a small mass on my right testicle. He's like, you talking about your dick? <laughs> well, I raised you well, but now is not the time, bro. He's like, all right, I'll connect you to my urologist buddy. But I got to warn you, he tried comedy and residency. So be ready. He's like, all right, get the call. How's it hanging, brother? <laughs> I laughed so hard. He's like, I'm just kidding. Listen, I've seen the ultrasound. It's a benign cyst. You'll be fine. But just to be sure, go get some blood work tomorrow. I'm like, all right, no problem, doc. Thank you very much. He says, Nimesh, you're a comedian, yes? He's like, yep. He's like, I think you'll appreciate this story. The other night, my wife and I, we were out at a Nets game, sitting courtside next to Derek Jeter. My wife didn't know who Derek Jeter was, so she asked him, Derek, what do you do? And Derek said, I'm a ball player. And I, I leaned over and said, me too. <laughs> I like this guy. I think he became a urologist just for the jokes. <laughs> In my head, I start this competition with myself. You know, I was like, this dude has definitely heard every terrible dick and ball joke there is. I gotta hit him with some shit he's never heard. I have to make him laugh, that's my goal. He told me I have to get this blood work, but I'm really juggling this decision. He just told me, it's a benign cyst, I'm outside of the window for this to be anything serious, plus it's my birthday weekend. I gotta go do hood rat stuff with my friends. <laughs> I'm like, do I need this blood work? On my left shoulder pops up Indian Angel, Hassan Minhaj. <laughs> and he starts spitting facts about the healthcare system. It's like, every year. <laughs> Americans spend a hundred billion dollars on medical tests they don't need. <laughs> Nimesh, do you really need this test or are you a pussy little bitch? Goddamn, Hustle, relax, bro. All right, man, put the PowerPoint away. I'm not going to get this test. 
But then my right shoulder pops up Indian Angel Aziz Ansari. <laughs> He's like, nah, man, treat yourself. I'm like, you're right, Aziz. You're right. <laughs> Obviously, I get this blood work, okay? And I, then I still go drinking. And I discovered that's the only way I'm ever gonna go drinking again. Donate blood and then go get fucked up. I got so ripped, I had whiskey dick, wine vagina, halal food, it was incredible. <laughs> the next day I get a phone call at 7.45 in the morning. It's my doctor. What's up, doc? Nimesh, I was wrong. It's not a benign cyst. Your hormone markers came back elevated. You have testicular cancer. Good news is we caught it early. Bad news is you have to have your right testicle removed immediately. That wasn't funny at all, man. <laughs> Better hit the open mics again with that bullshit. It says, now, now, Nimesh, no need to get testy. It's like, <laughs> he don't miss. <laughs> he don't miss. It says, Nimesh, listen, I do the surgery all the time. Just remove around 250 grams of material. You'll be right out. I said, oh, okay, cool. Thank you, doc. You have any questions? How much is this going to cost? He's billing insurance $46,000. $46,000 to remove 250 grams of material. Quick math, that's $180 a gram. I'm like, Doc, even El Chapo would say that's a ridiculous price. $180 a gram, $180 a gram. I can't argue with him though, because he's operating on me. What if he spits in my sack? I'm just like, hey, Doc, listen, $46,000, can you, can you add a few inches down there? <laughs> he says, it ain't gonna help. <laughs> <laughs> I get off the phone with the doctor and immediately text my group chat of Dr. Cousins. Hey, man, they say I got cancer. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to have surgery? Three of them don't respond. It's too early for them. Two of them say yes. The youngest one, replies in emojis. Scissor, basketball, trash can. <laughs> I don't know what I ever did to this guy. I think he's still mad he used to nut tap him all the time. You ever nut tap a cousin? One time I hit my cousin in the nuts so hard we got banned from Burlington Co. Factory. <laughs> I dropped him right in the South Pole section. No fucking <laughs> Then they all tell me, obviously, you know, you have to get surgery. This is the correct course of action. That's when I go into denial. Like, cancer? Me? Impossible. I turn into QAnon. <laughs> Start doing my own research. What did Hillary do to my balls? <laughs> I read this article that says this hormone that's elevated if you have cancer might also get elevated if you smoke a lot of weed. I don't know if you can tell, but I do do that. <laughs> Look, there's no way I'm losing my right nut to indica. I refuse to have that happen. <laughs> Dig a little deeper, read this other article that says this hormone that's elevated if you have cancer is also present in pregnant women. It's HCG. The stuff that makes placenta grow is present in dudes with this cancer in pregnant women. And the back of the envelope test for this cancer is to get a pregnancy test. So I disregard all of my cousin's medical advice. <laughs> And I go to the bodega. <laughs> and I buy a loose first response test for $3.99. As I'm buying this test, there's a lady in the store. She sees me buying the test and she says, congratulations. And I look at her and say, we ain't gonna keep it. <laughs> my body, my choice, okay, ladies? See, I too know what it's like to have something growing inside you that you don't want. Go home, take this test, sure enough, I'm having a baby. Now it's confirmed. Now I know I got cancer. Now I gotta call my parents on my birthday weekend, no less, and let them know the baby boy's gonna lose his favorite nut. <laughs> call home, dad picks up, dad, I got cancer. I got a surgery in a few days. In response, he says the most Indian dad thing ever. He says, okay, let me give it to mom. <laughs> He's so cool. Mom picks up, mom, I got cancer. I got a surgery in a few days. 
Cancer? Stop drinking. <laughs> I'm like, Mom, it's not the alcohol. It's the drugs, okay? <laughs> She says, Nimesh, don't worry. Everything's going to be fine. God is with us. I said, thank you, Mom. I hope science is too. <laughs> Feels like one of those situations where science would come real handy. She says, Nimesh, don't worry. I believe in God and science. I'm not Christian. I said, Whoa. <laughs> well, I sense some of you Christians getting a little hot on that one, huh? I can feel the crosses burning on your chest. <laughs> don't worry, guys. He gets us. Why, why does Jesus have commercials? Do you feel like stealing, murdering, and fucking your neighbor's wife? Coming down, get some Jesus. I hang up with my mom, and I light up the biggest joint I could find. I start talking to God about my balls. Like, God, how the, how the fuck did I get cancer? Is it these tight-ass pants I've been wearing? I'll switch to Jenkos right now, bro. How... Is it all these mango white claws I've been drinking? <laughs> and then it hits me. This is how I got cancer. My first tour, 250 shows, 60 different cities, all across this country. I spent it talking shit about the American healthcare system. And I must have gotten a little too close to the truth. I think these pricks heard what I was saying, and they switched the 5G on my phone on, you see? And now I got fucking cancer. But there's no time to dwell. It's one more day to surgery. So I spend that last day doing my right testicles, favorite things, one last time. <laughs> Swaying side to side in the wind. <laughs> going to the gym, using the air dryer, you know. <laughs> going to the dog park with a pocket full of peanut butter, just. <laughs> yeah. I still do that, you know. The next day, it's, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. I go to Jersey City Medical Center, put my gown on. No Yeezys this time. I'm laying there on the gurney, and in comes a Filipino man with scrubs on. The nurse, he's got a pair of clippers on him. The shit you get fades with. And I know what's about to happen, so I'm like, bro, why are you smiling? He says, lift your gown and spread your legs. I'm like, are we at prom? All right. Then without asking, he just starts shaving my balls. But only the right side. It's the weirdest yin yang you've ever seen. And I'm laying there thinking, you know, I always assumed my first gay experience would involve shrooms. I'm not being manscaped by Manny Pacquiao over here. And it's very uncomfortable, okay? This dude is flicking my dick around like a Catholic priest. You know, it's up, down, left, right. I'm an altar boy. And he's wearing a cross, and his cross is dangling over my dick as he's shaving my balls. And I'm looking at this cross like, Jesus, come get your boy, bro. <laughs> come get your boy, Jesus. And I look to my wife for some kind of comfort and solace. She is dying of laughter. And she goes, it's not the threesome you wanted for your birthday, but... Oh, you like that one? This dude's taking his time. He's like carving his name in there. And then in comes the anesthesiologist. And she sees him and she goes, yo, what are you doing? And he freezes a little bit, uh, and then he runs out of the room. And the doctor's trying not to laugh. She goes, we're so sorry. That's supposed to happen when you're asleep. I've never been more awake in my fucking life. Who the fuck was that guy? Did I just get molested by some kind of ball-shaving bandit? She's like, we're sorry, there's a nursing shortage. I'm like, you hired Larry Nasser. Okay, cool, thank you very much. I don't know if I can super malpractice, but I'm suing for razor burn. Something bad happened to me. She's like, we're sorry, we'll just give you some Michael Jackson juice, you'll be right out. That's what she called it. I'm like, yo, that's hilarious. Just give me a little less than you gave him, though, okay, please? Well, in comes my urologist, the surgeon I've been talking to this entire time. Comes in, he starts writing his initials on my right wrist, my right hip, and my inner groin. I'm like, we go together now, Doc? What is this? He says, no, this is just to ensure we get the correct testicle. I'm like, have you ever gotten the wrong one? He says, only once, but she's fine. <laughs> so 
Do you have any serious questions, Nimesh? Like, yeah, I got a serious question. Yeah. Is my voice going to change? He's like, your voice is not going to change. You're going to be fine. So, okay, cool. We go into the OR. They ask me, what song do I want to hear when the juice kicks in? Like, P. Diddy, I'll be missing you. <laughs> and they put the mask on, but they're playing the song from YouTube. So instead of Diddy, I hear a targeted ad for erectile dysfunction medication. <laughs> You need to yell, shh. <laughs> Juice kicks in, I'm out 40 minutes. Doctor, it's right there when I wake up. Nimesh, surgery went great, everything looks good. How do you feel? Fine. <laughs> what did you do? The juice was too strong, Doc. The juice was too strong. <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever done that before. I was like, I got you, didn't I, motherfucker? I put it in my head right before I went to sleep. <laughs> He's like, that was a good one. Go, By the way, we had to take both. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> you know what's weird? Is that throughout the whole thing, I never had any fear about the cancer spreading, about dying. When it's your time to go, you go. That's how I feel. I was raised by DMX. <laughs> the biggest fear cancer patients have is social isolation. It's the fear of losing friends, because no one wants to hang out with people who talk about cancer all the time, because it's a real buzzkill. <laughs> and I agree. I went to a group session once, total drag. <laughs> one guy found me funny. This guy with stomach cancer. I said, hey man, you wanna, you wanna hang out sometime? I was like, nah. <laughs> what are we gonna eat? <laughs> I know, I'm a dickhead, I know, I know. All my friends are dickheads, so don't feel too bad. Two days after surgery, I walked into the comedy cell in my home club in New York. My best friend is sitting at the table. First thing he says is, hey man, you lost weight. <laughs> and then he flung a Livestrong bracelet at me. I was like, <laughs> Fuck, you get one of these. My cousin, admin in all of my group chats, changed my name to Ekbal Patel. <laughs> Even my wife, ride or die, day one, A1. I'm scribbling notes down every day, taking notes. She pokes her head into the office. She says, you know, I've been thinking, You've been writing so much, we should get you sponsored by that pen company, Uniball. And then she left the office. <laughs> Could have been teabagged her properly in revenge, you know? <laughs> but you gotta laugh. You gotta laugh. Otherwise, you turn into Will Smith, you know? <laughs> Look, I know Chris said enough about Will Smith, so I won't say too much more, but that was not a slap-worthy joke. I've been to the Oscars. My first writing job ever was the 2016 Oscars for Chris Rock. I've been in that writer's room. I know the mean shit that definitely could have been said. I know if I was there last year, I definitely would have said something like, Jada's head looks like Nimesh Patel's ball sack after surgery. You know? <laughs> I would have earned the slap, is all I'm saying. I'm being honest. Alopecia, barely a real disease. Any alopecia people here want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a cancer survivor? <laughs> I'm looking for shiny heads. <laughs> I didn't think so. Look, I understand it's a real disorder. I know if you're an adult with alopecia, it's very hard to express emotion because you don't have eyebrow hair. So, oh my God, are you sad or mad? Who knows? I know it impacts women disproportionately because hair has a lot to do with gender identity. I understand that. But don't talk to me about gender identity, okay? I lost a testicle. <laughs> I'm one nut away from going full trans and joining a swim team, okay? <laughs> you call me Namisha Patel and this bitch, I don't give a fuck. I'll do all the strokes. <laughs> and if we're comparing diseases, which is what I'm doing. <laughs> cancer's here and alopecia's like right here, okay? <laughs> Look, at my wedding, at my wedding, my safe space, the party my wife and I had paid for, my sister-in-law, closing lines to the reception speech. We're so glad we all made it through this planning process with all of our sanity and most of our testicles. <laughs> and my wife gets up and gives her a hug. Oh, thank you for that HIPAA violation. That was so funny.
I thought she was gonna slap her and say, keep my man's balls out your fucking mouth. <laughs> Didn't happen. I went to therapy because none of this felt real. You know, it was a very surreal experience. It is a very real story, it's a completely true story. If you want proof of my experience, you can check my OnlyFans page. <laughs> Username Ball is Life. But you know, you talk to all these survivors, everyone's got such humbling stories. Like, oh man, I got so much perspective. You never know what's gonna happen. Life is crazy. Appreciate every day for what it is. I don't feel humble at all. If anything, I feel invincible. <laughs> I went from balls hurt on Thursday to surgery on Tuesday. I had cancer for three business days. <laughs> I had the Amazon Prime of cancer. <laughs> I remain an optimist, you know? Some people say, the glass is half empty. I say, the sack is half full. <laughs> Matter of fact, I know God listens to me, okay? I know God answers all my prayers. See, last February, I came off my first tour, and I had another 60-city tour lined up. I had no material. I was laying in bed like, Lord, I would give my right nut for some jokes right now. <laughs> And then God said, happy birthday, motherfucker. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. How's it hanging? How's it hanging? Really firm. <laughs> right here. Can I tell if it's gonna rain? <laughs> That's so funny. Cause that's like an Indian ass question too. <laughs> my mom used to do that shit. When I was a kid, she would call me like, Nima, it's just gonna rain tomorrow. Like, How do you know? My knee hurts. <laughs> Every now and then I'll call my mom like, mom, this will be an avalanche on Tuesday. <laughs> How do you know? My testicles twitching. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. He asked, do they still both go up when it's cold? For like two weeks after surgery, I had to put a piece of gauze in between my dick and my ball sack. Because otherwise, the fake one would migrate north as if the real one just voted for Trump, you know? <laughs> I'm moving to Canada! <laughs> no, you ain't, motherfucker. No? Okay, what was the question? Did I keep the other one? I, you know, I wanted to keep it, turn it into an NFT, but... <laughs> they don't have the science for that. Have you named it yet? Yes, I have named it. This is Prince Harry the Spare. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not on the outside. <laughs> Sometimes I use a flashlight to see if it can glow in the dark. <laughs> Are your friends still nuts happening? No, I'm 37 years old, man. <laughs> the new one's squishy? The new one's squishy? No, it feels like a lychee candy. <laughs> It's hard and soft at the same time. <laughs> does my wife like it? I mean, she does treat it like a step ball, you know? Like, she treats it the same, but I could tell she loves it just a little less. <laughs> the stupidest question I ever got was, can your wife tell the difference? It's like, yeah, she's not dumb. <laughs> she can tell the difference between left and right, you know? <laughs> she ain't down there like, I know it was your right, but is that my left? What is it? <laughs> What's the scar like? Yeah. You gonna update my Wikipedia profile? <laughs> Why did I choose to be a comedian? Well, I graduated in 2008 from NYU with a finance degree. And, and that was about the funniest thing you could do at the time. <laughs> what do I hate the most about Indian people? Sometimes they come together at a comedy show on Saturday nights and they ask the stupidest fucking questions. It's just so stupid. <laughs> what joke were you trying to do there? The obvious one. Yeah, comedy's difficult, ain't it? <laughs> I want to shout out my urologist. He is here. Where you at, Doc? There he is.
in his defense, he didn't say half the corny shit I made him say, okay? But he's seen my balls, so we're even. <laughs> Best city on tour, well, outside of New York? D.C. I love D.C. because everyone there is so informed. If ignorance is bliss, D.C. is the saddest place in the world. I went to D.C. and I went alone. I felt lonely, so I put on a suit. I went to the bar at the Ritz-Carlton to see if I get a hooker to hit on me. And it didn't work, but I got pretty drunk. And as I was sitting there, I felt someone blowing my ear. And I turned, and there's an old white man who looked like he was holding in a pretty dark secret. He said, hey boy, room 418 for a good time. So I weighed my options. And I went upstairs and I fucked that dude. <laughs> Only so many chances you're gonna get to fuck Mike Pence. You gotta fuck Mike Pence when you meet Mike Pence. Thank you guys so much.